I really want to get 2024 off to a good start. So for the first time in over 15 years, I'm getting a golf lesson. So welcome back to the channel. As I said, walking in from the car, I'm coming for my first lesson and it's my first lesson in about 15 years. I'm looking forward to the challenge. You might have your work cut out, but everyone, this is Brent Dale. He's the head pro here at Liverpool Golf Club. Uh, he works with some really good players. He's got a thriving junior program. He's worked with some tall players and everyone in between. But to be honest, I actually listen to you most through your podcast. Yep. I'm a little bit addicted. I was doing Good. some, building some furniture at the weekend. I was listening to uh, your podcast with Simon Dyson and Sean Foley. Yeah. Uh, it was really good. So it's been really good to be able to learn from some of the best in the world and figure out what makes them tick and how they get the job done. So I'm hoping that knowledge, those secret tips that he's got, he's gonna be able to impart into my game. I wanna start 2024 well. The idea with this video is this is, I'm, I'm gonna be getting my lesson. I'm gonna try and keep the camera running so you can take a look at how that goes, see what we get to, see what his advice is. If you know my swing from watching the videos, it might be interesting. And if you're new to the channel, well, maybe it'll be interesting to see how a golf lesson goes uh, and what sort of feedback we get. Let's get into Thank it. You. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I see that you've done what most amateurs do. At least you haven't pulled a driver out, but you've yeah. gone the seven iron, which is, Probably the most used club in the world. Yeah. I want to start you out with a wedge. Okay. And I just want to see, we're going to go to that little red flag there that's about 30 meters away. Yeah. I just want to see what your connection's like, what, I just want to basically be able to see what you're doing with your small shots. Yeah. Because if you can't do it well with a short, like, you know, half swing sort of thing, we're going to really struggle doing it as a full swing. So I just want to sort of, collect some data for my own brain and just see what we've got. Yep. And then before we sort of have a look at some numbers, we'll just do this. Perfect. So with, with your game, what would be your strengths in your mind and what would be your weaknesses? I think I'm generally quite good at plotting my way around the golf course. Yeah. I kind of know my own um, game a little bit. My short game, if I'm playing well, is on. And I sort of take, I think, percentage type of shots on sure so i'd say i i am not going to overpower the golf course i've just turned 40. i don't think i'm an amazing ball striker or anything like that yeah but i sort of have found my own way you know how to, to get around and make a score i guess and have you how many years have you been playing that's a good question just roughly like yeah, 20 years yeah, over or? 20 years yeah. just over 20 years all right perfect and then sort of what just while you're hitting a few of these just so i can get a bit of a background on you did you play any sport as a kid? I played a little, uh, I played football or soccer. Soccer, yeah. In Australia and golf. Like most kids, started off really casually with the golf and then I got really into it. Spent a lot of time up at the golf club in holidays and things like that, playing yeah. a bit as a junior. Yeah. And got to a, probably my best level was in my early 20s. Yeah. And then, yeah. Gave the game away for a little life bit and, kids, and life happened, and, kids yeah. happened, yeah. yeah you, got, and, you got kids? Yeah, two kids. Two kids, all right, cool. Just, um, can we go to that black and white flag now? So that one about maybe 45, 50 meters out? Yeah. We'll go to that one. Great shot. All right, so how often are you getting one to play a nine holes or 18 holes? And then secondly, how often are you getting to go to the range and practice? Because that's, that's going to determine how I out like sort of yeah, lay makes out sense. this lesson. If I'm lucky, I'll play once a week. Realistically, more like once a fortnight yeah, sure. in terms of getting out there for a round. And I'll yeah. go through little patches like holidays and things where I can play more. But this year I want to try and be more consistent to once a week yeah, sure. for 18 holes. And the range has been hit and miss in there. I'll try and do some short game stuff if I have time, sure. maybe a couple times a month on the range. But this year, a lot part of the reason to get a lesson is that I haven't really known what to do at the range. Sure. So I'll just go and so you're just going there to keep things time ticking in. over. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I'd like to be able to go to the range and actually have something to work on. Sure. Like it doesn't have to be the world's greatest. Yep. But just have a, a bit of a plan for my game. Yep. Something to, yeah, to yeah, be sure. working towards. All right. Would you ever be interested in like there's a golf specific physio that I do a bit of work with? Um, so generally what I'll do if I lay out this lesson and figure out that I think there's something 
not working functionally, like there could be a hip issue or yeah. a leg issue, yeah. would you be interested in going down that route of, like he's a golf-specific physio? Yeah, I'm, I'm completely open whiteboard so this is your year. as to how <laughs> we go about it. I actually, yeah. my handicap at the moment is 1.6. Yeah. I've been down to scratch, but I'm not really worried about the number. Yeah. I just want to feel like I'm working towards a better game. Yeah, sure and um, trying to do things that are just going to help me yeah. be a more solid golfer. At the moment, I'm sort of winging it. Yeah. I'd rather have a plan. All right, cool. Let's hit two or three more with that, then we'll grab the seven iron, and I'll, I'll record a couple. Are you much of a divot taker when you play? No. No? Okay. All right, let's step into the seven iron. I'll probably take a huge divot now. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the way, right? Yeah. All right, so full one. Yeah, I've got on that, that tree. See that tree in the background that we've lined the uh, flight scope up to? Yeah. I'm going to do some recording just so I can have a bit of a squiz and put it in my program. How am I supposed to fix that? <laughs> oh, it's money this well is not spent. One of those Thanks very much. Comedy channels, is it? <laughs> <laughs> You're actually a European tour player who's out here on holidays. And yeah. No, definitely not. The first thing that I probably noticed from face on, so this top angle here, was just, just you, I would like to just see a little more tilt in your upper body, the spine angle. So you're a little bit, you set up and you're a little bit this way. Yeah. When I was watching you hit wedges, I thought, okay, he's just stacking the left side to try to create a better compression, but then it, it bleeds into your lower okay. lines, and I'd say it would bleed into your full swing as well. Um, sorry, like with your driver and whatnot. Now, if we set up a little bit this way, what it can cause is, you sort of indicated pre-lesson about yeah. this. Maybe you get a little bit left of a fade. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think a lot of that could be if we're setting up here, and I'll just show the, the watchers here, if we're setting up a little bit this way, what can tend to happen is the club might go out this way. Yeah. And then we will try to counteract what we're doing wrong in the setup on the way down, and we just lead with that club face open. Yeah. Whereas if we can get a little more... Could that get you coming across it as well? Yeah. Because, I mean, I 100%... Yeah. We come. haven't even got to the down the line sort of stuff yet, and that's yeah. where I'm saying, well, I might make myself look silly here, but... If we get into, if, if we are not in a decent position here, so, you know, say 55% of our weight on our left foot, and I always like to say to the young kids that come through our program, when we're setting up here, arms are hanging freely, and our left shoulder, I use this aeroplane drill where they go bum out, the weight goes forward, and then the plane turns a little bit to the right. Obviously, that's too much, but you can see just by getting my arms a little more this way, it fixes that spine angle, right? Yep. So then, when I come in to hit, I can hit a little more of the inside of the ball and let the club face release and it's probably going to get rid of that cut that you might have sometimes, right? But let's have a squeeze. You got any injuries? Uh, no, I, I periodically have a, a stiff lower back. Yep, okay. The only reason, I'm just going to draw a couple of little lines here, but um, just look like a little rigid through your um, takeaway. That was kind of why I asked, would you ever consider working with like a golf specific physio? But yeah, because um, they can just free up some of the stuff. I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm always lower back, upper neck, those type of things. Yeah, okay. So what I look for here, and I'm just going to explain the things that I look for in the swing, right? Obviously we need a good solid setup to start with. So we might not even talk about raising the left shoulder or whatnot. It might more or less be something that we change in our sort of we might just pivot our butt cheeks around a little more this way right so i'll explain all that when we put the camera down when we get back here i like to see the belt buckle at impact mm. back on that red line so you're just a little shy of it you're a little short of it right you can see your belt buckle is more there yeah so we just haven't got back onto that left side enough and that correlates back to that question do you take divots yeah divots aren't important but sometimes we if we don't get back on that left side, what happens is the club has to try to release a little earlier. You yeah. can see at impact there, your hands are at your right leg. Yeah. I like them more at your left leg. Yeah, okay. So we want to see them a little more forward so that we can get a better compression. I don't care if there's a big fillet of 
grass coming out yeah, yeah, yeah. but we want a more solid compression and listening to a few of your shots earlier the first thing that came into my mind was i'd like to hear more of a a thud it sort of sa it just sounded a little off that was all yeah right does that make sense what we've spoken about so far so yeah. belt buckle i want to see a little bit more of a lateral slide into that um line that started on your left leg the line here on the right you can just see your belt buckle everything sort of stops your hands at impact or at your right leg i'd like to see them a little more forward okay yeah just to create a better compression now let's have a look down here so what i like to do here is draw a line on the shaft to start with mm. a line sort of from the ears down through the hip and then a line just on the butt cheek because the line on that butt cheek that um vertical line there it just shows whether we're getting too far forward you know early extensions the big yeah i everywhere. hear that a lot yeah yeah so a lot of that comes from shaft pitch if people get too steep on the way down they sort of run out of room and they have to stand up and away from it to sort of create room and that's where that you know their, their hips sort of thrust towards the ball so if i'll explain again what i like to see yeah so i draw a line on that shaft and what i like to see is the club head and the shaft traveling up that red line so you're doing a really good job with that, right? And then when we get through here, I like to see the hand somewhere around that right shoulder, but every person's a little bit um, different, obviously. And then on that way down, what do we got going on there? Can you just see what I'm talking about here with that club head? Mm. What I really want to see is the legs. So the foot starts, the legs start, the hips start, the chest start, like everything goes in that sort of sequence. Yours kind of looks very armsy from there so even like see how you're releasing that club head yeah it's going up before the the lower body's hardly done any work if that makes sense yeah. right so i think we we're going to do a little bit of stuff today on firing that lower half a little more yeah and working the hands a little more forward through impact we may see a few right ones yeah that's okay to start with and what i'm thinking is that that position there where that that club head is doing that movement before you've even initiated the lower body i think that will disappear by using the lower half better okay if that makes sense yeah. so you're getting up here and you've got all this wiggle room because your lower half hasn't done anything what should be happening is as we're getting to about 70 percent of our backswing our foot should already be or our feet should already be initiating yeah down into that downswing and then what happens is that club will almost sort of create a little bit of that lag as the body's doing this but if we get here and we're sort of paused this wants to this yeah the club okay. head Got and the hands want to initiate the downswing yeah so something needs to trigger it almost yeah, correct <laughs> yeah but I, I i would like it to be more of your feet now you don't have a, a steep shaft on the way down it's almost like up here you are Reroute. I think over over time, and because I'm sort of self-taught in yeah. the most recently, you just kind of your hands yeah, you, feel what work. Yeah, correct. Sort of get that feel. Yeah. Just have a look here at impact. I'd like to see just a tiny little bit more of that. Like I said, that drive through the legs, maybe a little more open with the hips. I think we can work with this. I well, think, that's I, positive. Yeah, I think I think a lot of it could just be getting the. Like you said, you played soccer, right, or football. Yeah. Now, if I said to you, kick a uh, football, yeah, you're not going to stay flat-footed and just go like this, are you? No. The first thing you're going to do is sort of load into yeah. your, to your right side before you've even kicked that ball and before you've probably even lifted up your right foot that's going to kick. The left foot is getting this way; it's getting planted, so all your energy is going into the ground, and yeah. then this comes through. So, to put that into the golf swing terms. That's the left leg. Yeah. It's shifting this way. And then all of this can follow through versus getting here and routing the club into the perfect position, but not really getting an oomph on the golf ball. Yeah, not okay. compressing yeah. it as well as I'd like. Yeah. So, all right, so we are gonna start, even though we've got our seven iron, we've been doing full swings, we are gonna start with some small ones, right? So yeah. before we hit this golf ball, what I'd like you to do is take your stance, pretend you're setting up to it, but just inside. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is just tackle that, uh, I'll come this angle. I just want these hip, there we go, that's plenty. Right, so you, not every shot, but you get a little bit of this, that's an exaggeration, so people on camera don't think that's what you look like all the time, yeah. right? I just want you to feel that the left side is just slightly taller yeah. than the right side. Does that feel awkward? 
pop the no, fob down? It feels quite a subtle change. Yeah. So I'm trying to just make sure I know, yeah. I can feel what the change is. Because if someone's like this, and I get them into the correct position, they feel like this. Yeah. You know? For the time being, until we have a, a follow-up session, yeah. can you get a little bit more weight on your left foot for me? Good, that's plenty. I want you to feel a little bit uncomfortable in your setup. Yeah. Because if you're comfortable, you're reverting back to what? Yeah. What's bad. So it's a slight feel more you're on the left. You're gonna feel about 55 on the left. More. And your hips are gonna feel maybe a little more this way so we can create that tilt. Yeah into that spine. Now, what I would like us to do, we're gonna swing back to about half weight, and then when we're here, we're gonna really just try to feel that leg drive, right? Yeah. I want you to try to feel that your hands are winning the race. So we've got the golf ball there as the winning post. Yeah. Right? We're trying to get your hands to come and win the race. So at the moment, when you make impact, your club head gets to the ball and your, your grip's still back here. Yeah. I want you to feel that your grip is winning the race yeah. back to the ball. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, cool. So no ball just yet? Just off like Just little a little swing. half swing back. So we're, we're, we're getting that set up position. All right, just swing halfway back for me, John. And we're gonna be feeling drive and a bit more, you might need to feel a little bit more acceleration of the hands. Yeah. I don't mind if they still release a bit. Yeah but I want them to feel like they're moving a little bit quicker towards our left side, that's it. Now we've got to be mindful with this drill that we don't just lead with that club face way open like you're doing there, so yeah. try, try it again. All right, so we're here. Yeah. So we're feeling that lower half really engaging. Yeah. And the hands are going to accelerate a little bit more so that when we, if we were to video again from side on at impact, we're going to see the hands more in line with your left thigh yeah. as we're making contact versus the right. We may experience a couple of shots going to the right early on just because to me you're looking like you're holding the face open. Yeah, just it feels a little bit like that. Yeah. All right, good. I like that sound. It sounded a little more aggressive and like yeah. if we were to have a ball there, we might actually be able to get a real solid strike on it. Right? Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's just try a couple. Maybe about... I don't know, 80 meters or something like that. All right, try it again. See how we reverted back to a little bit of those old habits where we we clipped, we didn't clip the grass. We basically just clipped the golf ball clean. Yeah. And as we're coming through, I want you to feel back more on that left side. Squaring the face. All right, good. It's gonna feel a little you're uncomfy. Almost, yeah, like you're gonna lose your balance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because if you're at the moment, if you're keeping your balance, you're probably still in that same zone that you were in before. Yeah. I want you to feel like you're slightly losing your balance forward. Yeah, okay. So we're getting a lot more activity with our legs to start with. And we may rein this back in over time. That, um, what you were saying about almost feel like you're losing your balance, I think that gives me the feel, yeah. like on get my weight onto the edge of this foot. Yeah, what, where I would like it, as we're coming through, we shift around into that left heel. So you'll see here, my knee gets straighter, my left side extends, right? Yeah. So this left side extends, and my weight's gonna come around into my left heel. Yeah. Versus, okay. yeah, we don't wanna just be over sliding on there. It's all yeah. gotta get a little bit taller. Good. That's kind of what I'm after, is that feeling of a little more uh, speed through impact with your hands, yeah. right? A lot of people, try to sort of baby it into position and keep it on plane, which is good. Yeah. But I, I want you to now take that next step and get those hands accelerating a little bit more. So a bit more hand speed matched in with that, that weight shift and the body turning. Great. And just move that ball position slightly more forward. Good. Okay. Nice try. Let's do it again. Very clean, like what you were saying. Yeah. I, I would still like to see Right now, you're a greenkeeper's best friend. Yeah. But I, I'd like to see you just interact with that turf just a little bit Catch more. Catch a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a couple of drills in a second here that'll help. Nice try. Like I said, the first initial, yeah. we're gonna get a little bit of a right bias just because you're holding everything so open yeah. rather than turning. And, and that's 15 years of, I yeah. think, trying to control the club face Correct. in my own way. Yep, exactly. So a lot of the stuff I'm going to give you to do today, you could do it out at home. 
right. judging by your divot pattern, you're not going <laughs> to make your grass, right? But you could do it at home. You could do it, um, you go to the driving range. It's always hard when I give people these drills to tidy up a bit of pivot stuff, right? They don't want to waste golf balls on it because they're buying a bucket of balls. Yeah. They don't want to hit 50 out of the 100, you know, 30 or 40 meters. Yeah. But you'd be surprised how much better you'll get okay. by tidying it up. And this all links back into why I started with you hitting some wedges. I wanted to see how yeah. the interaction was, right? Let's try it again. That setup looks so much better. So to me, that setup looks a lot tidier yeah. than what it was before. I only videoed to check your hands at impact. Okay, so you can see now, just as we're making contact, that club is hitting the ball and your hands are closer more to your zipper closer, rather than your right yeah, leg. Yeah, yeah. So we've probably moved them an inch and a yeah. half or so. It's funny, even in the stance though, I've, I do feel a bit like weight forward and at an angle like that and you look Crazy, at it right? and it's like, okay, it just looks like a good golf stance. Yeah, it <laughs> looks really, it looks nice. Yeah, yeah I, I like it. That's good. So we've got a feel that level of uncomfortable at address yeah just to eventually find that as our norm yeah and then what what, what in a perfect world you come for a lesson in a month and yeah. you're like this and i'm like hey we've overdone this we've got to yeah dial it back the person that turns up and they have still got the same setup and the same problems you can tell straight away they haven't done any work on it okay. or, or i've miscommunicated the message yeah All right now I'll, I'll throw in a little drill here right what we're going to do just to get that brain realizing what the body's got to do because that's really what telling the body what it's got to do it's it's the boss right so we're going to do some swings i'll start with a little uh, practice swing here and as we're going back just something as simple as the left foot coming a couple inches off the ground and replanting just with little half swings just like this it's telling us all right as the club's going back i need to push more weight back this way so yeah we, and you that will translate into a full swing of as i'm getting here i want to be feeling yeah. that left leg so as, as i said before earlier in the lesson we're getting to about 70 or 80 percent of the length of our backswing i want to see always reference it the kids if our body weight had an arrow it would be throwing it down into the ground that's not what our club's doing that's what our our weight's doing it's shifting into that left foot yeah and as we shift into the ground the ground pushes us back up and that's how we get that extension through here right so for every action there's a, there's reaction. a reaction right yeah. so if i'm throwing weight down into the ground the ground pushes it back up and that's where this finish if you went to a if you went to youtube and looked at a whole bunch of swings on there and you start to watch these guys you'll see adam scott tiger woods they as they're swinging they get here and everything starts to shift forward and then as that shift has happened this has to get and they get taller through this left side as they come around into their follow through right yeah so right we are just getting the brain and the feet trying to sync up a bit of a move to the left side and then there's another good one that we can do this one's a little bit trickier i think you'll be okay with it some people really struggle with the sequence but we take our stance so we're really comfy we bring our left foot back to our right yeah now we've got to hit but the, the left foot, as we swing back, the left foot will go back into the position it started. Right, okay. Right? So, so we're here. Right, so I've, as I've gone back, the left foot replanted, and that is getting me into that left side. You can see I'm not Greenkeeper's best no, friend, right? A little bit different, um, turf interaction. Though. Well, yeah, I'm focusing on, I guess, practicing what I preach, which is, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of big chunky divots, but I want to get ball first contact. Mm. A lot of the movement that you can have, you've hit some good shots today, yeah. but a lot of the movement that you can have, if you wake up a little stiff and sore some mornings, your body's already thinking that it doesn't have to move. Then you add in our age yeah. <laughs> and we're tired and stiff and you don't move, you might catch a few heavy contacts just early before yeah. the golf ball. One of the shots you hit before was beautiful and I said, how am I going to fix this? The next shot, looked okay but it probably went 20 meters shorter than the one before due yeah. to the contact so what i'm trying to get out of today is shaft planes are all okay yeah i want a consistent strike on the ball so that your carry distances yeah that's probably what lets you down a little bit on the golf course as far as greens in reg it could be a little 
rights and lefts, but setting up thinking your 7 iron goes 150, but eight out of 10 times it goes 130, which is what happens with a majority of club golfers. Yeah, yeah. I want to get it so that it, the windows are a lot closer to that 150. All right, so let's try that drill. So you're taking your stance, you got yep. your seven iron. Aim at that tree still, or? Yeah, oh look, aim's not, I'm not really that worried about where the aim is right now. Yeah. But um, we're still getting into that nice solid setup position that we've worked on. Yeah. Now, as you swing back, left foot goes up and down like I demoed. That's it, good. You might feel very uncoordinated doing this to start with. <laughs> But that's just, okay. just a little it's bit. It's okay. I had a guy last week who was struggling with this really badly. He couldn't even get his leg off the ground because oh, really? he was one of these guys in his back. Oh, and so he couldn't. Yeah. He couldn't lift it. Yeah. I had to refer him to that golf physio. All right, let's try and hit one, and we can have a giggle if you you miss it. <laughs> but it's only a 30, 40 meter pitch, making a nice solid contact with the ground. Nice work. Very good. So that's one of those drills. Can you show me the second one? So when you when you set up to the ball, yeah. bring your left foot back to your right so they're touching. So yeah. you're starting in that position. Yeah. Now you have to, as you swing back, you've got to get that left foot back into position. All right, left foot back. All right, let's do it. Wow, nice work. How's it feel? Feels a little bit like there's a, there's a drill that I sometimes, I've done speed ch sticks yes, training over yes. time. There's so a, it's like a drill two or three out of that, that yeah. protocol. Yeah. I enjoy it. I, you, I enjoy that. Yeah. yeah. And that's. But I've not tried hitting golf balls with it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's something that I've prescribed this drill for 20 years. I think it's a good it's a good drill to get your hand eye coordination and your body sort of all doing. Yeah. It's, it's a hard one to do. How it's a hard one to sync up. It's all right. Let's go again. Just the the biggest thing that I emphasise during my coaching and, and also with the kids, and you would have heard this on the podcast, Yeah, it's okay to fail. If we're not failing when we're practicing, we're probably not making that many changes, right? Now, there are people that will come for a lesson and I make a tiny little tweak and, it's, and it perfects them. But a lot of people that come here will have problems with their setup and their yeah. grip and their stance and all sorts of things. And we need to understand that Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes you're going to go backwards before you go forwards. I don't think you're going to be one of those people, but just explaining to your audience that if you have a lesson, yeah, trust the pro yeah, and just stick with the drill. I think that's the thing as well, isn't it? It's never going to just be an over, it's highly unlikely it's just going to be an overnight thing. I've got 15 years or 20 years of, of doing Practice what I do, so the baggage way you or do whatever yeah. you would call it. Yeah. So, so you know, you've developed a motor pattern over, you know, 15 to 20 years yeah. of a way that you think that it needed to be done. Yeah. And we're just changing. We've got to relearn that pattern yeah. of, okay, when we go back, we don't stay that flat footed. Yeah. We get a little shift on that left side and we try to get the hands a little more forward at impact. All right, let's go into the grass. Nice try. Can we hit a just a full seven iron, just trying to adopt those same principles. What I'm gonna show you is the likelihood is, I don't sugarcoat much, the likelihood is that when we go back to our full swing now, you are gonna look very similar, because we've only sort of hit 20 or 30 drills with it. Yeah. You're still gonna look very similar to what you were at the start. Okay. But what we need to understand is there might be a couple of millimeters of change, and two months from now, that could be the two inches of, sort yeah. of hands more forward that we're after. Got you. Wow. Straight on the tree. <laughs> Better contact, like we got a little bit of turf. Let's have a look here. I don't want to rain on the parade, but you know, I like that setup position. You can just see it's, it's trying its best to do it, but we revert back to what's comfortable, right? So what we need to do with this is, I would, if you're gonna to go to the driving range, I would break it down into five swings without a ball where you're doing both step drills yeah so you do the the foot lifting one then you do the other one where the feet together and you step out right yeah so that's 10 10 swings five yeah five then i would go five balls with each one so we've sort of uh we've made 20 swings we've only hit 10 balls then i might go one full swing so it's 21 balls right there's no method to this this is just what i'm prescribing for you 
then go back to the start and go five of the step drills or five yep. of the foot lifts, five of the step drills, then do five balls each with those drills and then hit one shot. Now we're just rewarding ourselves with one shot. You did that for months on end. I could almost guarantee you that your hands are gonna be in a much better position after you've done that work. It also shows that that shot there was quite nice. We hit a nice little draw. The contact was a little more solid through the ground. When we revert back to the camera, like I said, I don't want to, you know, kill the happiness, but yeah. it still doesn't look that much different. So can you imagine, it's January, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine by March or April, if you stuck solidly to these drills, if we got into those better positions, how much better the striking would be. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, golf's a hard game to be consistent at. Rory McIlroy can shoot 66 on a Saturday and 80 on a Sunday, right? So if the average golfer can, you know, they can they can have a much bigger variance, absolutely, right? Yeah. But we can get a consistent strike on the ball. Golf's gonna become a lot easier for you. I just wanna show you something, right? So just go up to the top. Right now, now do the leg work. Right, yeah, good. You just sometimes, not every time, this upper body just got a little funky in that move down. I want yeah. you to just feel almost, not resisting it, but you need to just feel that that lower half is just moving a little more into it first. Nice one. So the ball is going slightly right because the club face is telling it to go there. So yeah. it must be just coming in a little open. So in time, what I would suggest is you keep working on this motion, but then that that club face, just grip the club for me. So you're probably just coming in just marginally open, all right? That watch on your hand has to feel like it's turning. See what we've just done to the club face? Yeah. So that watch, rather than the watch pointing out to the right there, the watch is almost gonna feel like it turns a little left of the target and that is squaring the face up. We don't wanna be doing this. Yeah. But it's gonna feel a gentle little motion. I always, show people with this issue if i've got my watch here at impact it's probably pointing out to the right and if i can just get it to if i can start to learn that motion yeah right, see what i'm doing there with that left hand keeping it in flexion i don't like to use these big words but there you go see what that's doing yeah now if we had the club there it'd be pretty close to square but that's that's something you can do some work on but I really think to start with, just let's get the body initiating better, then we can start to work on that club face a little more. All right, let's go. All right, nice try. So let's go, full seven iron. Just trying to adopt those same principles, right? We're getting that lower half moving into the, the ball. All right, so we've got our setup position that we're trying to achieve. Lower half. Nice try got a little baby draw on that one did you i mean you'll be able to check this on the camera later but you kind of looked like you fought your balance a little bit after yeah it did yeah, yeah good perfect do you have any questions on this so far i assume my only thing is and it's always one with lessons it's like when you go back to the course do you just sort of let it happen on the course so I'll, this is very much like yeah work, so i'm going to pump arrange. all of these videos that we've done into skillist it's a yeah. coaching app that i use um I'll flick a switch that allows you to send me a couple of videos over the next few weeks to make sure you're doing the right um, things. Now, what I would like you to do, I used to be that coach that said, when you go play, forget about it. Yeah, okay. But I don't think that works for development, right? I think what we need to do is before every shot, there is no reason why your playing partner's over there getting ready to hit their shot. It's not your turn. Yeah. Why can't you have four or five practice swings thinking about what you've got to do, these yeah. drills, right? And then your key over the ball will be something that really correlates with your brain. So it could be, I know for me, if I'm playing average on the course, my swing key, I have to feel that muscles around my left hip stretch more through impact. And that means I've got my weight back on my left side and I've turned more. For you, it could be something that, oh, I need to feel like I'm losing my balance a little bit on that left side. It could be, I need to feel like my hands are accelerating more, okay? Yeah. So that's something that I can't tell you what your key so I, or is, cue is. You I You'll figure it out. Feel yeah, I was it. never told to feel a stretch in this left hip. It was what I identified with me using my body more efficiently. Yeah, okay. And as I get older, 
The stretch is a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. All right, hit one more for me. I like the sound on that one. How did that feel? Nice, it feels like they're coming out. I do like it, I like the feel. Yeah. I like the feel actually it's set up. And ultimately, this kind of feels like what I wanted. Like, yeah. And I want something so that if I go to the range, I've got a couple of things. I'm not a super technical type of person, yeah. Yeah. but I want some stuff that I can actually know. I've got a feel, I can hit 20 balls, I can do a certain swing, as opposed to just yeah. going there and thinking, well, I'll go through the clubs, I'll yeah. aim for a few different targets, and it's like I'll go and play. Yeah. So I actually, I'm, I'm fine if it's, there's a few, I don't mind where they go in. It's yeah. like, I know what I'm trying to do. If there's a yeah. plan, I'm happy with that. Yeah, perfect. So that was great to have a lesson. And if the video has gone well, I'll try to edit into sections so that you can watch different parts of the lesson, depending on what you're interested in. But big thanks to Brent for his time today. Like I say, He's a really good coach, works with a whole range of players. And if you're a golf tragic like me, you'll probably love his podcast as well. So I'll make sure to put a link to that below the video. Like I said, I will listen to Simon Dice and Sean Foley on the weekend. He's got some great guests on there. It's really interesting stuff. I've also now got some drills to work on. Hopefully you'll be able to have seen those in the video. Give me some things to get better at. Golf lessons is a process, and this year though, I want to be working towards some things that are gonna help me. So fitness, lessons, everything else you've seen on the channel up to now. But see where my journey can get now I'm past 40. Can I still improve my game? That's the sort of thing that interests you. Obviously, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, comment, anything like that. And if you want to talk more to Brent, other than the podcast, he's also got Skillist. He uses that app to, to, to coach his players that are overseas or locally. For me though, I'm looking forward to working through my drills, practicing more, getting better, and hopefully documenting this journey for you. Until next time.